No, this is a battle every time before we start. It really is. is. You text the other day, you're like, you know, I woke up this morning not really motivated about (laughs) doing podcasting. Hey, if you don't get anything else out of our show, you're going to get the truth. Yes. All right, Mark. How you doing, man? Have you finally shaken the the cooties? Uh, you know, it's it's that time of the year where it lingers for Jeez. a while. But I think your immune system is compromised or something. You've been <laughs> sick for six weeks. You know, that's what uh, that's what Vegas does to you. And um, you know, you'll you'll have that though. Well, it's, I don't know what happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas. It never does. It always comes back with you. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I, uh, I'm, I, I don't get enough rest. I don't eat right. Um, you take any supplements? You take any C or? Like, I mean, I take vitamins nice. every day and stuff. I need to eat more, I guess, beef sticks. First form, well, but, beef sticks, that'll yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah Especially right. those. Those are really good. You know, I did, um, I'm essentially about 90, 95 percent carnivore these days. Just the hell with the carbs and the veggies and just, just yeah, just yeah. straight meat. Yeah. yeah, it's not a bad. I mean, if you think about it, it's not a bad gig. I'm probably not going to live a long time anyway. You're a sprinter, not a not no. A, not I a never, marathon I guy. never. Expected. I mean, you ran marathons, but you're a you're, yeah, you're a sprinter. I'm a, I'm a yeah. I'm a, let's just see how quick we can get this thing done. That's what my buddy. My buddy, who's he, Jody, yeah. in Nashville, you know, he'll call me up every once in a while. And we'll start talking about all our ailments and <laughs> aches and pains, and he will go, you know, we're sprinters, right? He goes, we we ain't gonna be here for all. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm actually uh, I'm actually looking at more of a marathon type run right now instead of that sprint because for years that was well. Once you peeked into those fifties, you probably were like. I kind of want to hang out for a little while yeah, longer. I'm on, I'm, on the, I'm on the downside right now. And yeah. I feel like, yeah, it, uh, why you got to bring up age though? Hey, I'm just saying I like, just, you just start looking at more longevity and you go, okay, what can I do today to help me add maybe another day to the, oh, man. to the, to the timeline? Jody, let me tell you something. I think Jody, uh, David, like <laughs> we need to bring these guys, uh, onto the podcast. Of it. Yeah. Oh Yeah. Because they, they got some old dirt on. Well, me. I, that's the thing. Like I feel like that's where uh, the audience, as much as they love the Undertaker, they love the Undertaker stories of oh. what was going on outside of the ring, what was going on behind the scenes, and you know those guys. They were, I know you outside of the ring, and I know you as Mark Calloway, way more than I do Undertaker, right. and but I've I've seen the. Uh, you know, the I would say never saying that you didn't have a good side. Just saying the more well behaved Mark Calloway. No, I'm a good person. Yes, I just didn't miss too many good times. That, and these gentlemen, uh, Jody being one of them, definitely was yeah. part of some of those good times in those Nashville. Yeah. So all those. So I'm a I'm a few years older than those guys. So like I was, I think when I was. Like in my early tenure with with WWE, those guys were all working downtown Nashville as bouncers and <laughs> as they were going through school. They have right? no money. Right. They're just yeah. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I would I would come in uh, off the road and like I could I couldn't sleep, so I'd get a motorcycle and I'd haul butt downtown, and hang out with those guys and. Uh, yeah, they, they were a bunch of degenerates <laughs> to, to, to think that one of them is a president at Georgia Pacific now. And the other one is a, <laughs> we may, he may lose his job now. Uh, oh, you, wait a second. You, uh, yeah, no, he does a great job. Man. Yeah. He, he, he talking about grinding and paying dues, man. David Neal. He's he, the guy. Yeah. And he used to have these territories that he had to go into and work and oh and yeah man he was on he was on the grind for a long time so i'm i'm really proud of of uh you know his position with the corner office now it's up here in yeah, atlanta yeah. downtown atlanta oh, you know, yeah, get the high rise yeah, yeah buddy yeah we we were actually been talking about going he just they just finished their uh 
their lake house and we're gonna trying to get organized and get planned so we can go i was like you want me and jody and our families oh you're talking about bringing the whole yeah oh i think i think he wants us to come but i think he definitely wants us to bring our families so that we're uh, a little well, bit <laughs> well behaved i guess i don't i don't i don't know how that one goes but and then you got uh, jody up there working on yeah. every country singers teeth oh, there's, there's nobody else. in nashville that doesn't if if they've got if they want pretty teeth they don't go by and see jody yeah, yeah i mean he is uh well, as soon as you make a little bit of cheese you got to get good teeth yeah That's you got to get your teeth squared away because everybody's always looking at your teeth but yeah it's always like it's a it's like a virtual who's who <laughs> like when i go in town and i drop in you never know who's going to be sitting there you know it one day maybe chris stapleton the next day jamie johnson and, yeah uh man it's crazy the, the the people you know that he's you go into his office if you make it by the the salt wall and all the yeah he's he's, he's bougie down. oh he's got it bougie down there at music road I, anytime yeah. you know we, we'll all talk about going places sometimes like hey let's get, get together go let's go skiing for such and such and you know first thing jody well i'm gonna need to know what i'm gonna need to know what the amenities are at the hotel <laughs> You know I me. Mean? I'm looking. Jody at, can't come on a hunting trip with no, us. No, no, no. He might make. He might. He might make it at um, at Andy's, at Andy's place. place. But uh, yeah, I much past that. I, he <laughs> yeah. No, no. He he needs his amenities. He's gonna need that pool. He's gonna need the hot tub. A little par three golf course. Yeah, he's gonna need the food. Yeah. He's gonna have to bring in a massage therapist. Yeah. He's yeah. He's definitely got to have amenities before uh, he commits to anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. A, it's so funny to have such a uh, like a eclectic group of, of of friends. Like like most of the guys I see with you know we're all like all we want to be is be in the woods hunting and doing yeah. things. And then you got bougie, bougie Jody. Oh yeah. Well, the you know the only time and I ever dollar Dave. <laughs> the only time I see Jody is I go play at a uh, in a golf tournament every year in Nashville and he's part of the country club oh, yeah, and yeah, you know so yeah. he's in there eating dinner every every year oh, yeah. and go over oh, yeah. and see him and his wife and but yeah it's uh he he's a good guy though <laughs> he no those those are like old old time friends those guys 35 plus years we've been friends longer than that man it's crazy they, you know that you've that I've stayed in touch with people for that long as much as I've moved around yeah. and, and, and have been gone. I have, I mean, I'm, f I'll be 41 here soon. And, uh, I, yeah, I don't have any friends from that far back. I mean, from when I was a kid or any of that yeah. stuff. And, you know, it's, I've got, uh, probably my best friend in the world. I mean, we were in the army together and we've known each other for 20 probably 21 years or something like that been the best man in all of his weddings all of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should <laughs> you know, i think you and uh i mean his next one he'll catch up with you wow. uh we'll, well see i'm that done so. yeah i think he is too yeah, I'm done. So. <laughs> I, I, one the, the, there's there's a hundred percent that I'm not going to upgrade any. No, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And two, like, I'm just too damn old to rebuild again. <laughs> uh, you know, so. Yeah. Oh, man. Lord, Lord knows I can't have any more grandkids. Uh, no, you've already. <laughs> you've already, already started making You're already own. having your own. So. I'm stepping on your lines. You are. I? You yeah. are. You're, you're, you're messing up my, uh, my rhythm here, my flow. Uh, so. <laughs> I, I've been using, I, I, uh, I was in Tampa a few weeks back, as you well know, and I find myself using that line quite a bit. I do give you credit, though. Well, I will give the credit to Terry Labonte, the the NASCAR driver who said it to uh, uh, Bill Jordan, Tyler Jordan's daddy over at Real Tree. Oh, yeah. Because Bill Jordan did the same thing. Yeah. He ended up um, uh, having a couple of kids later in life, and uh, Terry Labonte said, "You're the only man I know that's having his own grandkids." Yeah. So, yeah. Dang. I uh, I stole it from a NASCAR legend. I just got to make sure I don't have great great grandkids. That's that's that's. A, that's... <laughs> oh Lord! Yeah, I, I thought you know I thought I thought you know I thought retired life was going to be different, but I stay as busy now as I was. Yeah, you are a lot busier these days than I think people don't realize. Um, <laughs> you know, you 
it, it's um it's insane to me because like we'll sit down and look at our schedules and go okay when can we film and right. well, you know what days are the right days and all this other stuff and you know we've got obligations now you right. know we've we got people wanting to to partner with us we've got people wanting to do stuff with us and so we're a little bit more conscious of making room for that and then yeah. plus on top of it it's you know we also want to tell these stories to the fans we want yeah. the fans to hear the stories and be consistent with them but you know your schedule has been absolutely insane and you know the wwe you know has you doing the one dead man shows and it's yeah. you know you're doing appearances you may be doing signings and then you know you're kind of booking everything along with pay-per-views right for the most part for the most part yeah, yeah. yeah. and when that happens i mean it's just that's every month yeah and then also you just you also want to be retired you also want to be a husband you also want to be a dad yeah <laughs> and, I, and i like to hunt and you like yeah. to hunt on top yeah. of it yeah. so it's just like um before you know it you've got just as not just as busy of a schedule because y'all's schedule was absolutely insane, oh, insane. Yeah. but you know it um there's no rest for the weary sometimes and at least you're not getting punched in the face anymore. I'm, yeah, I'm not taking. Yeah, I'm not getting punched in the face. I'm not taking bumps, but uh, you know, you still got to deal with airports and do all that, and and just and being gone. And it seems like you know, especially here, like recently, like I, I remember when I went to Tampa a few weeks ago. I was just like, oh man, here go Tampa. <laughs> Saudi. Now I'm Saudi. <laughs> or Australia. I mean, I can't get much farther apart. Like, I, I got to go to I gotta go to Saudi and then come back and then go the other direction to to, to Australia. And I mean, I'm blessed. I, I mean, and I, yeah. and I look at it that way that, that you know, that that these people, obviously, you know, they they want me to come. But my goodness, it is. Uh, well, it, 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 we're not allowed to complain, right? No, because that's cares. the thing is it, nobody cares. And then yeah. also it's. I, the day that I, as soon as I start complaining about things, I start realizing, you know, man, I'm, you know, I, I, I was hanging out with this person or I was over right. here doing this with this person. I was hunting with this guy. I was yeah. shooting with this person over here. And then, you know, the things that people would kill to do, I'm yeah. getting to do. And I'm over here complaining about the fact that I've yeah. got to fly here. I got to fly there. And so it, you've definitely got to. What, what do they call those first world problems? It's first world problems, <laughs> first world problems you know. Yeah. Uh, the things that I dreamed about as a kid that I'm getting to do now. Right. I'm not allowed. I can't, you can't complain. You can't complain no. about it, no. right? You're no. not allowed to. No. But then, and I look at how busy your schedule is, bro. I look at the rock. Right. And it's insane. You know, you and I talked about it, and I, when we talked about this podcast you know, or talked about doing something together like this a while back. I remember one of the, like, I was like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want out of retirement? Like, mm. and I remember you were like, man, I don't want to do what the rock does. <laughs> that dude's working way. Like yeah. he is, the money's great, but man, does that dude work? Yeah. You know what? And I don't think with guys like rock though, and people like him, Elon, not, not Elon Musk and rock or not, not uh, the like, but, but they got they got some same traits. No, they though. do have a lot of the same traits. But what I say, I don't think it's the money that motivates no. them. And I know that, you know that Rock seven bucks promotion, like he had seven bucks when he left. Yeah, and all that. That maybe initially was his motivation, but I think he his his vision and everything is is so much bigger than like how much scratch he's got in his pocket, right? Yeah, you know, I, I just and I think those kind of people, you know, Elon Musk was the same way, right? I don't think. They just like building stuff. They like working. Yeah, like they creating. like that. Yeah. And, 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 and things like that. And, um, you know, I don't know that I was necessarily blessed with that same, that same gene. <laughs> I'm committed to the things that I do. Yeah. But I don't want, I don't like having, I don't really like having that many spoons out or that many. I don't want uh, to do that many things yeah, at one I, time. I want to do what I'm doing and I want to do it really well. Yeah. Um, Make a good living yeah. and get keep yourself occupied, but keep, yeah, just you know, and, and pay it back somehow. But yeah, those those guys are man, the they're, rock they're, man. They're, he, he's he grinds, man. That dude don't stop. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, good for him because for and this has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about, but like 
you know, you wrestled with him early on. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you saw him come yeah. up. And, I mean, to be able to go from where he did, I mean, as Rocky Maivia and this kid coming out dressed kind of weird. <laughs> I never, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. I, I remember when he coming out in the garden. He had that the the the, the funny colored thing on and the whole it's like deal. a purple and black. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, this kid ain't gonna make it. <laughs> he, he got a Did chance. You really oh, think yeah. that? You're oh, yeah. like, this is yeah. No, he's he, he's he's dead in the water. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if he's a legacy or not. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I thought him being a legacy would give him a couple years that he probably didn't wasn't going to deserve. <laughs> But uh, you got to remember, he's on the board now. So no, you know, I know. You, you, you got to watch out. Yeah. Yeah, that Undertaker guy. What are we paying him for? Uh, but no, I mean, he's a. I mean, he is the American dream. Golly. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, he, he wanted to play football. That fell through. You know, there's a lot of times when something like that happens. You know, people cave and and they never they never rebound. Yeah. And man, he was just always even. You know, even when I thought he sucked, <laughs> he was always motivated. Yeah, and he wasn't like he wasn't like having a pity party, or he wasn't. He was he was picking people's brain, and and you know he was around the guys that knew what the hell was going on, and picking their brain and trying to figure out what what it was that he was going to bring to the table. So I mean, he is he is. I I, I wish more people had that um I, i'm just talking about the wrestling side of it right yeah. now um because a lot of times guys are very right now I, I feel like like there's a lot of guys that are very cookie cutter they're looking at the formula that what they think is going to lead them to success and they're bringing nothing new to the table they're staying within the box that was what was so great about uh bray wyatt yeah. Oh, yeah. He just broke boundaries. He, he thought. Yeah. He thought outside of the box. Um, you know, guys like Rock. Uh, you know, with, with his with his promos and and I mean, it just it was just always, you know, never be content and always try and and, and be better. And then he, he just took that. Rock just took that from the world of uh, of sports entertainment into entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and building an empire essentially. Uh, yeah, an empire, and. Yeah. He, um, you know, he was on Rogan and said uh, something about like he was essentially doing the same thing, you know, almost every night. Um, He had been kind of put into this box or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he just asked, you know, can you give me the microphone for just two minutes tonight? And uh, then his promos that he was doing before versus that night. Oh, yeah. Apparently. I mean, it just he he took a. A different turn that right. led to him right. becoming the rock well same thing you know that was same thing with, with with austin too yeah you know with the with the austin 316 promo that sent him on a different trajectory i mean he had had that great match with brett yeah but man it was that promo that 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 next night that just went strapped <laughs> the rocket to him and you know and then you know obviously rock and and, and stone cold's rivalry and all that man they, they fueled each other because yeah you know they both wanted to be they will both wanted to be that top dude and, um, and you just never know when that one thing is going to set you off like that yep. that one saying that 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 one move that mm-hmm. whatever but it's typically whenever you kind of stretch yourself yeah or you get out of your comfort zone yeah yeah and then all of a sudden i think everybody realizes whoa I never saw that side. Yeah. You know, the, I remember the, the stunning Steve Austin, right. you know, from the WCW days. Right. And, you know, I would have ne- <laughs> I would have never, yeah. I would have never thought that that was going to morph into stone cold yeah. Steve Austin. Yeah. The biggest star ever. Yeah. 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 And, um, and just cutting that, that, that one promo um, kind of did that. But, you know, I, I, I just look at, Going back to those schedules and stuff, to the fact that I mean, The Rock is, man, he doesn't slow down, and you know he is hot and heavy on social media. He is working out like crazy. He's got I don't know how many different brands that he's associated right. with. Right. He started 
UFL, you know, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, merged it, merged with XFL, the XFL, the USFL, and together, it's right? like doing that. He, you know, he's now on the board with WWE. He is TKO, TKO, TKO yeah. yeah. He's on the board of that. He's yeah. going to wrestle Roman Reigns, and if he ends up beating Roman Reigns, he's going to end up being the world champion of right WWE. Like it's. And he's no spring chicken either. That's the other thing. Yeah. And then I look at that and I'm like, God, that looks exhausting. Yeah. But, but it's something that's in him. Yeah. He thrives. Uh, yeah. He thrives on it. Yeah. I like, man, I love holding down a chair and smoking a cigar. I ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs> I smoked the hell out of a cigar. And I, uh, yeah. and I think that's the difference. I think a lot of people... You doing this is not your nature. This is yeah. a no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and no, I think this I'm, is a battle every time before we start. It this really is, a, is. It is a battle of like, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? That you're gonna, I mean, you text the other day. You're like, you know, I woke up this morning not really motivated about <laughs> doing podcasting. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> It's like, okay, great. Hey, if you don't get anything else out of our show, you're going to get the truth. Yeah, it's like, okay, great. Awesome, man. Um, well, you just you just let me know. Uh, I'll be at Austin these dates, and uh, we'll just go out to eat, I guess. Yeah, you know, we'll screw the, screw the podcast. Yeah. We'll just go eat and try out different Mexican food restaurants. We'll you just be, let me it'll know. Be, it'll all be good. But, if it, I mean, you're more of a go disappear. Yeah, at like, this point. Yeah. I think it's because I, I grinded, I grinded for so hard, for so long. Like the, the like the nineties, man. It, we, I went hard, hard in the nineties. Yeah, and, and, and even in and, and out of the ring. And and I, well, no, there is. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I, I was I was creating that brand, and I was living a rock star life, and um, and then it got. Then it then it turned into. Uh, you're pretty, you're pretty important to this industry now, <laughs> and and then it was like, okay, well, I want to be, you know, whether I ever got there or not. I was like, like, no, I want to be, I want to be the face. I want to be this. I want to be that. Where everybody's like, oh, you're kind of more of an attraction. You're, you know. So there was just you know, everything. Everything changed and. Like the the goals changed yeah. and everything else, but when I was, I mean, like I went, I went really hard for a long, long time, and um, you know, I do find myself restless though. Like if I'm not, you know, here, like there was a while there where I wasn't doing much. Yeah, uh, you know, before the podcast, before the one dead man shows, before I started doing a lot of signings. I mean, I was. I was home and there's a lot of times where I'm like, I should be doing something, you know, and you know, it's not really any. Cause I mean, you're not old. No. You're, I mean, no. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> old, know, but no, no, you're not, you know, 75 years old and yeah. you've been working at a factory for, you know, sure. 50 years. It's, yeah, you, you still got some tread on the tires and. And your mind is an act is very yeah. active as well. Yeah, it, it it just it it just needed to find it that that replacement. Yeah, I, I think um, that I could sink my teeth into. Like I I, I just you know I'm not, I'm really not that like I'm not that much of a entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean yeah we sell merch and we do that, but to go out, I mean I'm not I'm not a you're not a grinder in that sense in the sense of. of that right yeah. uh but you know I, I when you spend 30 plus years in one industry and you know kind of do quite a bit in that industry and then it's and then it's gone the the, the part that you love the most right which was getting in the ring and performing yeah uh you know it, it, it leaves a it leaves a void and then it takes a minute to kind of figure out uh, what 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 what's gonna fill that void, but also because now I'm home and I'm being you know for once I'm really being a dad and being a husband and but there's still always like that that call of the wild too that's saying like you need to be out doing something 
which yeah. it just took me a while to figure out what that something is. And, you know, the one dead man show, um, you know, uh, I've enjoyed that. Yeah. And, and, and we're, we're, we've, you know, we've been kidding, but this is, you know, I, I'm kind of starting to, you know, enjoy this a little more yeah. than, you know, I guess as we kind of get better at it, <laughs> our own opinion, <laughs> we still could suck. But at, I, least, I, at least I'm more comfortable. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, sitting here talking. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Half the time I, I kind of just think like I'm at dinner or we're at dinner somewhere at some function and we're just talking about, you know, whatever crap. And then yeah. that that's kind of the mindset that I, that I try to get in. Yeah. Cause I'm much more open and, you know, like, I, I, <laughs> I, th I feel like sometimes that uh, I wish that we could hide some cameras and some microphones in some of the oh, places. Oh and because uh, I think some of those episodes would have. <laughs> I tell you what, it would have been a great episode was in Jan early January. The last day of that Sand Hill crane hunt. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Florida. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into a hundred times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000. It's the easiest app to use for even a guy like me. Download the app today and use code 6FEET for the first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today and use code 6FEET for a first deposit match up to $100. Dude. It took everything I had Bro, that day. let me tell you something. Uh, that day, that, that about 30-minute time frame was – about as intense <laughs> intense of a of a of, of a moment that I've had in quite a while because I'm at a point where I'm like okay the undertaker can't fight this guy <laughs> you weren't gonna let me <laughs> we can't allow this to happen so I'm just later thinking this dude needs to shut up or uh, myself, my brother, or I don't know, one of the other six dudes that are out here are going to have to go fight this dude because apparently he doesn't want to hear the fact that there was, we can't hear anything he's saying, complete miscommunication going on. I'm getting hot right now. I just, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, um, I don't know if you realize this or not, but there was definitely a, a conversation that was had. Uh, I don't know. I, when I left, when when I said bye to y'all, brother, I, I, it was a long drive back to Austin, Texas. Yeah. With me regretting not at least pistol whipping him. Well, <laughs> to, uh, like, there was, bolt. yeah, there was uh, the man that, that owns that outfit. Uh, there was a, there was a conversation that was had with mm. the guide, first of all. And then there was another conversation yeah. that was had with the man that owns the outfit. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, butt kissing uh, and apologies and everything else that happened. But yeah, that was uh, yeah that, that that your retirement almost turned into <laughs> a prison, prison sentence. sentence. <laughs> Holy hell! <laughs> yeah, uh, that was uh, we love to hunt and we love to enjoy the outdoors and uh, you know. But apparently, this gentleman wanted to. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I, mean, I guess we ought to kind of halfway explain this. But we're sitting there. We're 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 hunting for sandhill cranes. We're laying in these these blinds, and for whatever reason, he set us up almost. I don't know what was it, a couple hundred yards from the highway. Yeah, and when you're in a field out in the middle of nowhere, yeah, by a highway. All you hear is the highway. Is the highway, and I'm the last guy in the line, so the highway is the closest to me. Yeah. So, I didn't hear hardly any of his calls. And when we say that, he is calling us to, you know, uh, to to sit up and shoot uh, once the birds have come into our area. Well, the problem with that is, is if you can't hear the guide, 
you don't know when to sit up and right. shoot. And what you don't want to be is the last guy sitting up yeah. to shoot. Because you're shooting air. Because you're shooting at nothing, yeah. right? Yeah, you're and that's air. not why you're there. So he ends up moving down to the middle, but we're essentially having to communicate down the line on each yeah. side what he's saying. So it's a game of telephone. And once you have a game of telephone, miscommunication can easily happen. Easy. Easy. Because you don't know what you're hearing. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you're hearing. Uh, our buddy then communicates to the right. Well, you're on the end. There's a lot of times <laughs> where there's one bird, yeah. and the man on the far right is the only one that will shoot. Yeah. Well, that happens. And uh, this young man decided to uh, just... I'm getting hot all over. <laughs> my, my, I, I can, I can start. I'm starting to actually sweat because he ripped all, all over you. And then, you know, well, if you're going to shoot, you might as well kill the bird and all this other stuff. And that was after he was, no, you, you, you'll do that again. This hunt's over. Yeah. If you're going to shoot, you might as well hit the bird. And it was about that time that I'm ready to come up out of there and yeah. commence to whooping his ass. That's, and that, that, that was, that's when we were like, okay, dude, you, okay. Yeah. And that's where my brother, who is a man of communication, who is, uh, you know, uh, teaches communication with uh, executives. Mm -hmm. Um, Post-hunt, I had a conversation with with that young man and then called up the owner of the outfitter and was like, hey, here's the deal. Mistakes happen. No lives were... No one was injured. No one was hurt. This is what the scenario was. We're sitting right beside a highway. We couldn't hear crap. We have no idea. Like, you know, we're trying We're trying to do the safe thing by giving, yeah. you know, communication down the line on each side. And um, so, yeah, that was, uh, and I'm laying there just thinking to myself, if Mark comes up. This is not going to be good for for Mark. We're going to start there. Where it's like yeah. uh, no one, no. There is, that there's only losers. Satis- <laughs> that moment of couple, those couple of moments of satisfaction that I would have had watching his head split would have been that would have been bad. It would have fleeted quickly when I realized. When now, was- I will say this: the only <laughs> thing that I regret is not just standing up, saying something to him. And then telling the boys to go get the trucks because that would have prevented me from having to clean up the field and get all the decoys in. <laughs> I knew, there had to be a way. It just make him have to do all just of do the it work. All. Make him do it all the way. Yeah, man. Yeah. And it sucks because the next day we go out. Uh, you've you've left at this point, which yeah. you stayed a day longer than what you had yeah, planned yeah. anyway, right? And um, the next day we went and hunted uh, snow geese beside a bunch of trailers i mean it was a bunch of single wide trailers shut up yes we were literally 100 yards away from a dirt road that was lined with single wide trailers and i'm like where are we at this is two days in a row now they don't put us in a bad Mm. spot you remember that hunt that we had a few years ago where the birds were just landing on us oh yeah i shot two birds that landed on my feet Shut up. Mark, you could have reached out and grabbed birds. It was unreal. We're we're losing half of our followers because we're, we're talking, talking about, about hunting this. and uh bear with Mark, us. Bear with us. It was one of the best goose hunts I've ever been wow. on in my entire life. Trevor comes out there who has redeemed himself, in my opinion, from the very first hunt oh, yeah, that we yeah, ever yeah. had. Yeah. But Trevor comes out there and just I mean, it was thousands upon thousands of geese to a point where we had so much geese coming in that we had to stop shooting because we were getting so excited that we were like okay we gotta we gotta have smaller packs come in so that we can concentrate because we were actually missing on the bigger (laughs) flocks of birds that were coming in wow so yeah it was uh it was absolutely unreal but what my goal is is uh you know, I I've already talked to uh, to Andy about mm. putting together a nice little gentleman's hunt with 
maybe an upland hunt. Do a, I don't think you've ever quail hunted. No, um, no. Do a little quail hunt. Do a little night vision hog hunting. Mm-hmm. A little bow fishing. A little night bow fishing. I love that. Well, that was the last time I've been this sick. Was oh, you? Yeah, I, I that, yeah. almost killed the Undertaker with uh, COVID. Didn't yeah. even realize that I had COVID. <sighs> and we're out there bow fishing. It's like two in the morning, and I'm like, I gotta go back in. I'm dying. I get on a I different brow boat. Beat, brow beating you to death. You kept going, and you were out there all night long yeah. bow fishing. And yeah, but uh, <laughs> that's uh, you know maybe put together a a, a nice hunt at his lodge and yeah. you know that would be ideal right there ideal. a nice uh we haven't been there in a while yeah and, we need uh, to go i bet it's i bet it's just i mean he's it was ex- seller then. he's expanded he's built he's onto a, it and everything else so, outdoors, man. yeah hey so. you can be a sponsor <laughs> hey, <Andy. laughs> and you won't have to come off a lick of cash no it is that. Right up the doors, let us in. Andy's the only redneck I know that comes to WrestleMania and flies in on a helicopter. Yeah, he flew to Dallas <laughs> on his helicopter. <laughs> I don't know if you can consider that redneck anymore. I don't know. He's he's redneck. But he texts me. I was like, hey man, when you um, because he, he, he you know he lives just right outside of uh of Dallas, so he's about what about an hour and a half probably from from Dallas Maybe, hour. Yeah, and yeah. he's like. Um, you know, I'm going to be there at such and such time. I was like, man, Travis is going to be terrible. And he goes, oh, I'm just coming in on the helicopter. And I looked out of the window at the Omni. And there he comes <laughs> there in. He comes in. He, he had to close this little uh, landing pad oh, and all that nice. stuff. So, yeah, man. So, yeah, I don't know if The Rock, with his with his schedule, if he's out there looking to do any bird hunting or any of that stuff. But I eat bass fishes quite a bit. Does he? Have you not seen his? No. Oh, you got to go back and look through his posts. Of his, some of his bass fishing. He's a bass fisherman. He he's got well, he's got a uh, a pond on one of his properties that has some very one of his properties. One of his properties that has some very nice, nice black bass, very healthy, nice black Man, bass. A, a, yeah, maybe an invite to go to a little bit of. I ain't got it. So uh, you ain't gonna get it. I Your mean, invite's gonna have to come through me. Well, now you're his. Yeah, he's your boss. He's Maybe boss. it'll be kind of it'll I be just, a conflict of interest if uh, you come out there and get fishing. What about if I could find it and just go? <laughs> we should be sneak out there, on. sneak onto his back out in his backyard and start fishing his pond. Well, you know, and he throws them all back. He'll just have a big stringer full of black bass. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's one of his properties. Is it a property that he frequents a lot? I think so. Yeah, I think so because I've seen quite a bit of uh, footage of him fishing there. So. <sighs> Man, I think I don't know, but in Atlanta, Atlanta, which I don't know where it is, but it's got it's got some pretty fish. Dang, I didn't know the Rock was a fisherman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as busy as he is, he's got to have that outlet. I mean, yeah. working out and everything else is one thing, but I mean, I feel like for him, working out is a job as well. You know, like yeah. And then to climb back into the ring. Hey man, dude, it's. It uh, be, I mean, it's gonna be pretty big. It's gonna be big. <laughs> it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. Um, so you know, one Dan Man show Australia. Um, <laughs> it's you know you've spent some time in Australia. I have spent some time in so my, my first one in Perth. Is actually in a at a reformed prison. Yeah, that's what we and it actually, and it's going to be the biggest one that we've done so far. How many people? Uh, it's over twenty five hundred people. It's sold out already. One or two nights there. One, just one night. One night, twenty five hundred people. It's one night travel, one one night travel, one night <sighs> travel. I hit Perth, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, and. Um, Oh, what's the other one I'm hitting? Um, Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they're all doing they're all doing really well. No, I've always I've always enjoyed Australia. Um, been there maybe three or four times working. Um, I uh, uh, the first after the first time that I went, I said, you know what? If I ever had to leave 
if I ever had to leave America, you know, the United Australia States, Australia's the I, I would probably go to Australia. Yeah. I'm a little nervous because they're gun, you know, yeah, their gun laws are a little, little tight. That's why I'm going to Mexico. There are no laws. Yeah. Well, makes sense too. Yeah, it was a, there was a language barrier for me, but Spanish you can pick up pretty easy, I guess. But uh, no, I did. You know, the, the, the Australian people are very similar to Texans. They're friendly and they're just you know they're they're really I guess kind of almost kind of all out through the south. You know, we're just yeah. Like they're gonna nice. fight. They're gonna they're gonna fight for their family. They're gonna fight yeah. for their yeah. But they're this is they're just you know they're, they're a lot of fun. I mean, the people are fun, they, and and uh, uh, yes, yeah, so I've I've always enjoyed going there and performing. Um, I remember once I was, I think this was my last run as champion, and there was only one champion, right? So the champ had to make both shows. So I so Monday night was was Raw, so I I work Raw. Tuesday night we taped SmackDown. They showed on Friday, but we taped it on Tuesdays back then. So Monday night LA, Tuesday night is San Diego. Um, so I, I work, I do TV in San Diego, drive back to LA to catch the flight to Sydney. I don't know. That's what sixteen hours, seventeen hour flight to to Sydney landed got hung up in customs because of jerky are you serious <laughs> i didn't i didn't declare i had some um i mean it wasn't this good you know first, first form stuff, stuff but it was yeah but i i had jerky and it was it was sealed packaged everything you hadn't broken it open no 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 and they found that and you would have thought that i was smuggling heroin over jerky over jerky and so, man, they pulled me aside. They pulled me in this room. You know, they're giving me what for over all this stuff. And, you know, we could send you back on the next flight. You know, we're going to find you. They did. They find me. My God. Anyway, basically, then I get on the bus. The bus gets to the hotel. We have just enough time to take our street clothes up to our, get our tickets. I mean, our, our keys, drop our street clothes off bring our gear bag, get back on the bus, go to the venue, work, and then back to the hotel, and then a 6 a.m. Uh, departure time from the hotel the next morning to go back to the airport to fly to the di to the next city. Jeez. We did four dates in a row like that. We flew every day, even and then went to New Zealand, um, and then back to... I had to fly back to California in time to do Raw, because Raw was live every week, to make it back. And I think we were in like, um, uh, oh, she, what's the capital of California? Sacramento. Uh, Sacramento. Like it was like Sacramento or something like that. So, I mean, it was, it was absolutely brutal. But the people there, make it fun yeah yeah i, 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 I mean that's exhausting it it's is actually... it is exhausting and like and this is part of that time period too where you know i am I, you know i'm up I, i'm yeah yeah i'm you're not missing a moment I, i'm not missing a moment and but i'm also the champion okay and, and, and the duties that come along with that and i remember and i want to say it was sydney uh yeah we had for a house show non-televised it was a non-televised event we had over a million dollar gate now, this is 2008 maybe nine mm. million dollar gates in live events were not real common and i get it. so you know we go out everybody works and man, everybody everybody's exhausted yep. they are exhausted but they made an exhausted, I mean, just about everyone was made an exhausted effort. Effort was pretty low. It was effort was pretty low. And everybody was mm -hmm. feeling sorry for themselves. A lot of those people hadn't seen, a lot of people on that, on that roster hadn't seen that same venue half full, half empty, however you want to look at it. I mean, they were, you know, to quote 
Ricky and Robert from the Rock and Roll Express, they were hanging from the rafters, baby. I mean, it was phenomenal. And yeah. they were, the start of the night, they were really excited to be there. And everybody you know, was tired and like the effort put out was not good. So I remember coming back after my match, which was when we were on last. And I remember asking Fit Finley, who was our road agent, produ producer at the time, I said, Fit, you mind if I talk to everybody? I was going to do it either way, but I yeah. would give him respect of, 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 you know, it was just how, it, how I was going to do it. He goes, no, absolutely. So we got everybody together in a room. I don't know, I guess I, next 30 to 40 minutes, I proceeded to cuss and lambaste that whole roster uh, for their lack of effort and and pride in, in themselves. And, oh, man, it was bad. It was I don't remember if Michelle was there or not, but man, it was. Did you have, um, were there, were there any vets in the room? I mean, were oh, yeah. there guys in oh, there yeah. that were just as big as the undertaker oh, yeah. essentially oh, yeah. at that point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they knew I was right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah, they knew, they know exactly, you know, you just don't, you can't waste. I, I mean, everybody was exhausted. I'm not, I'm not, you know, but you just don't have those kind of nights. That kind of night for me was just like, wow, I've been here in this place nearly be empty. Yeah, I'm I'm tired. I'm really tired. Uh, but man, I'm gonna give it everything I got. Yeah, because I want this place to look like this the next time we come back. You know, and so. and then you also look at it just on and from the fans' perspective. I think it might have been. Kobe or somebody that said, you know, I, I I go out here and give the effort that I give because you just don't ever know, you know, if there was a dad out here that saved yeah. up all of his money and this was the only game that he was going to be able to afford to be able to bring his kids to the game or whatever. In that situation, you don't know fan wise like that could have this this family could have that they saved all their money to go to yeah, that absolutely. one event, right? Mm -hmm. And they wanted to see the Undertaker. Their son is a John Cena fan or you know whatever it might be well you need to give it all the you know you need to give 100% effort no matter what and then the other part of it is you're also in Australia it's not like you guys are rolling through town every no, no, month no we don't go there You're not every six months <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean it's it's that's a maybe I don't even know if it's a once a year gig I mean I mean it's it's not that often I mean I've been there and you think about our early 2000s, I mean, we're just now getting to a point where WWE's doing pay-per-views overseas. I mean, that's right. not a yeah. very common thing. Right. So yeah. to be able to go overseas and wrestle, especially in the early 2000s, it just wasn't happening as much no, as no. you may see. Not, not, to, yeah, not to countries like, yeah, like, I mean, we were just opening up. Australia and South America and all, all those places. And, you know, a lot of those places had had our TV for years and never, you know, never had live events. Yeah. And that's important. This that's is the first time they put their hands on the products. Yeah, maybe. absolutely. Yeah. And, and to go out there and, you know, cause you're tired, not, I was, I wasn't having it, man. You know, that's, now, do you remember who you wrestled? I don't, I don't. That night, I mean, I don't, I don't even remember who, who who I wrestled. I'm sure it was some, probably. Um, I want to say it was probably like somebody like Batista or something like that. Yeah, because I know I was champion, so I, I would have most likely been defending the belt. Yeah, but. and I would imagine if you let's say it was a Batista. I mean, I, I feel like a guy like Batista is probably gonna. Yeah, give you full effort if if in that situation and in the ring you're probably not going to allow him not to give that full. No, effort no, no, either. yeah, no, yeah. It matter who was, the, yeah, yeah. They would have got either they would have got run ragged. I would have either embarrassed them or they stepped up and you know, and, and David at that point had really turned the corner on like his pride level. Yeah, after that WrestleMania that we had, um, at, at, in Detroit. I mean, he was a he was a like man. He really took things seriously and and, and understood his role uh, within the company and realized that you know he's a, he's a top player and you know his effort 
man, was it changed exponentially after uh, after we worked. Yeah, at WrestleMania. I mean, he was man, he was he was legit, man. Yeah. Um. Now, uh, you know, just I think you see that happen a lot of times. Where I mean, if it's just you're exhausted, you're tired. I mean, you guys were ran ragged like that. Yeah. But I think um, you've got to have that locker room general. You got to have that person that is going to hold people accountable. And who do you think's doing that now? Who do you think that person is right now in the locker room? I, I, I know honestly, you. Don't, you're not. I know you're not down in the locker room these days or any of that. But like, I I, I really don't know. Um, you're right. I'm not. I'm not there that often. Um, and I don't. I don't know that there is that person. I, yeah. I, I think the the whole culture has changed so much that I think it's kind of. And I don't know this for certain. I'm just, my assumption is it's kind of, it's just everything's kind of self-policed. And, and you know, if there is somebody that's kind of, you know, screwing things up, you know, I mean, usually everybody's got one or two people that they're really, 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 really yeah. close with. Um, but I don't know, um, I, I don't know that they have their, their that one person that, that's willing to, assemble the group, the group and, and cuss them like, yeah. you know, and I, and I say that kind of, you know, halfway joke. I'm also, you know, was the first one to pat him on the back for, you know, for tearing down the house. I, I, I don't know. There could be, but I don't, I don't know who that would, that would be. Um, you know, a lot of the guys, um, yeah, it, it, the, yeah, the, the culture is really different. Like most of the top guys all have buses and they stay on their buses and, that was the other thing. It's like, yeah. is there is is the locker room has got to have changed a lot in the sense of now there's a little bit more money pumped into mm. you know the 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 talent and uh, what used to be where y'all would sit around on you know wooden benches yeah. <laughs> sometimes most of the time yeah. uh, in a locker room helping tape each other up and everything yeah. and maybe stretch each other to, before you could yeah, get out no, there. Like no, we've got. Now, I mean, yeah, doctors and trainers and massage therapists. And, yeah. I mean. So the locker room now is, I mean, you've got the guys that are on the buses. I was very surprised when I went to WrestleMania for your Hall of Fame. Like, there's a lot of buses that were there. Yeah. That a lot of the talent. Yeah, there's a lot buses. of talent buses. you got crew buses. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's, you know, I mean, hell, there's 30 semis full of, you know. Yeah. Uh, sets. And then, you know, all your, all the, I don't know how many how many uh you know stage crew buses there are and then now yeah you're right you got tons of guys that have buses that are talent now and and they're not hanging out in the locker room anymore not i don't think so i mean why would you really I, <laughs> yeah i mean there is something i mean there is something to, to camaraderie and and all of that um but uh, yeah you've got to have i think there's got to be a balance right because i mean you got on the bus you know, later in your career. Yeah, I got really late. Yeah, yeah, but you had to have had some type of balance there where it was like, okay, I can't I can't just stay on this bus. If I stay on this bus, am I going to lose some respect for yeah, some yeah. of the guys, you know? No, no, no. When I pulled up, mo most times, once I pulled up to the, to the venue, I, I went in. Oh, you did? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I went in. The bus was the, the for for me the bus was primarily post um, post match for me because before right before I decided to get a bus you know at this time now Michelle's traveling with me um, you know we're making three four hour drives after I'm leaving a, a, a an arena at midnight yeah I'm rolling up at three, four in the morning at a hotel and like I'm unwinding like body part at a body part. Like I, I sit <laughs> it, 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 like waiting to go into the lobby. I'm like waiting for my legs to kind of start to work again and, you know, pull, grab the top of the rental car and pull myself up a little bit yeah. and get my legs out. So for me, the bus thing was, um, you know, I had what they call, uh, hydroculator which is you get these big pads 
and they, they, they set in boiling water and you pull the pads out and you put them in another pad that, so you don't burn your skin. And they're like heat, they're, they're heating pads. Yeah. I had my game ready, which is, uh, basically an ice machine. Like you, you put ice in this, in the box and then you add water to it. And then it has, uh, these tubes that connect to these straps that I would put on my knees that the the air would blow the, the straps up and then it would circulate cold water. Um, I, it, you know, another thing as far as the bus too would be, uh, food. You get out at midnight, you're not going into a restaurant no. unless it's fast food. Now I'm, you know, I'm traveling with Abs McCool. Yeah, she's not eating she ain't water eating, burger. Yeah, she ain't eating a water burger, right? So she ends up not eating anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, bag of peanuts and a Diet Mountain Dew. So when when I would go into the building, uh, Larry, who, who, you know, he drove my bus, would go get dinner. So I come out. My goal was what, once at ding, 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 I come back. I talked to whoever, you know, I just had critique, whatever we did, grab my stuff and I'm on the bus showered. I've got my, my knees wrapped in ice and I'm flat within 30 minutes after the bell rings. I'm flat until the next morning with, with dinner, with dinner. Yeah. 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 I'm eating dinner as I'm taking all my treatments. And then when I wake up the next morning and I peek out the curtain, there, there's goals, Jim. Yeah. You know, I'm already, you know, he, he's already drove through to wherever we're going to go. He's checked into wherever he's going to, where he sleep, he would sleep wherever. Yeah. And then, boom. Do you think drives. you would have had higher quality matches if you would have taken that earlier in your career? I don't know that I would have had higher quality matches. I, I would have, I think, I mean, even though I lasted for as long as I yeah. did, I, I think I might have even lasted longer if I had been able to take that kind of care of myself. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the struggle for me, those last, I don't know, last seven, eight years was just health. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there was nothing really that, that happened or could happen that I didn't feel like I had grasp, a, a grasp on how to handle it or how to make it work or, yeah. you know, that part was, I mean, that, I mean, it was second nature at that point, but physically, trying to perform and keep myself at a level where I can I think perform. that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, would your, if you would have taken better care of your body by getting a bus earlier, being able to get better rest, better. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. The, the, when I say quality of matches, uh, you know, I just think about Roman Reigns, right? Yeah. The, the, and the fact that you were very injured going into that. Yeah. That match. Now, would the bus have been able to prevent you from having to get a hip surgery and all that other stuff? No, Probably no, not. No, no, no. no. But um, maybe there's the body's feeling a little bit better going into a match like yeah. that or something. You know, I just wonder if you would have. If I have took, if I got on a bus sooner and maybe slept a few more nights in the nineties, <laughs> hell, I might be still wrestling right now, man. I, I, yeah, at a high level. Yeah. <laughs> between between the 90s and, and you know we act like the bus would have fixed all your <laughs> yeah there was, <laughs> it would have helped it would have helped but the 90s kind of put i started in a hole yeah I, I, you know if the I rock was, was not, if the rock was part of bsk maybe the rock wouldn't be it, you know uh flying around private it, all the time yeah, and doing all that people one of them streets in la <laughs> shooting heroin right now probably uh yeah, you know, he never had to deal with the BSK. He never had the Godfather. Well, he 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 worked with the Godfather. He worked with, but he yeah, never he was, had to deal with. He was him in like the faction that. with him, but yeah. yeah, he didn't have to travel with him. <laughs> Rock would be four hundred pounds, and uh, man, yeah, that would have uh, that could have really went sideways. But uh, you know, did you when you went to Australia to to kind of wrap this up? Did you um, you know Australia is known for having a good time? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Was there some good times? Uh... Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I remember one specific time we were over there and I'm not I'm trying to think like we had wrestlers court at the hotel. Okay. Yeah. Right. I want to, I'm trying to, I think there was more than one person. I, I, man, I want to say it was Melina 
And maybe somebody else got brought up on some kind of charges. Okay. So we had a banquet room reserved at the hotel. Just for wrestler's court. Just for wrestler's court. And I'm talking about it was sold out. I mean, it was, I mean, we had, I think JBL was the prosecution. prosecution. I don't remember who defended Molina. Uh, Oh, witnesses were brought up, sworn in. Oh, it was, I mean, it was one of the more uh, higher end wrestler courts that, that I ever presided over. Um, Did JBL get bought out? I mean, he was known no, no, for. No, 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 no. no. no he, the, 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 that, that, that fate was, <laughs> it was sealed long before court ever started. And I remember, I, I remember Larry Heck, he's our, well, he was the head athletic trainer for a long time. Now he's got a new uppity position. He's got his own business card now. Oh man. He's basically, his job for many years was to keep me healthy enough to go to the ring and to put me over playing gin. That's all go. he did. That's all he needed. That's all he needed to do. There you go. And uh, he won't play me anymore. He's, yeah, he's scared. Yeah, but anyway, I remember him coming in with a big round, like, server's platter. Coming in right in the middle. I mean, it was a pretty intense part of court. Like, tears were being shed and all this. And he comes in with this ginormous tray, and it's got drinks, full drinks all over it. And he tripped this <laughs> serving platter just goes and there's drinks flying everywhere and uh oh my god i almost brought him up on charges for spilling so much alcohol <laughs> so much jack daniels <laughs> but he brought a little moment of levity it was needed too because okay. it had got it had taken a really pretty serious turn uh as far as the uh, defendants were concerned. And then now, did y'all set this up like you were actually in a courtroom? Were you oh, sitting yeah. up there like oh, you're yeah. a judge? Oh, you yeah. got the witness stand? Oh, oh, yeah, everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is it's one place, is one place back then as a wrestler, you did not want to be, you did not want to be brought up on charges. Now, was, as a judge, did anyone ever try to take you to wrestler's court? No. Nothing. You you didn't do anything to deserve to be. Uh, not, not no, not to the not to the not to the boys. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, I mean that's. Uh, so Australia had one of the most epic wrestlers courts. Oh man, it was great. It what was so funny too. Like you know back then. Now we still had a lot of women that would show up to the hotels. Yeah. Looking for a good time, right? Yeah. And they're all just all at the bar. And hanging out, and we're all in this room, and that's how important wrestler's court was. Like the guys had forgotten completely about, you know, the, 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 fornication and everything else. <laughs> this was this wrestler's court was important, and I mean, it went on for a while, and uh, yeah, it was yeah, that was that's how long ago it was that you still actually had women hang out at the at the hotels. Yeah, the uh, uh, not guys wanting to. The crowd has changed. It has changed considerably. <laughs> it has changed. It has changed a lot, man. Well, maybe uh, it is, which is good for me because I'm. Yeah, yeah, those uh, days are yeah, are long gone. It's my rearview mirror, but but um, you know, maybe Australia still, uh, maybe the women still enjoy um, wrestling over there. As uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, because it, it it gets really monotonous at all the you know. I appreciate everybody. I do, but, but man, yeah. That's, <laughs> It's a it, it's a blow to your ego, like like you know, one part of your career, there's one thing, and then the next part of your career is neck beards. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> there's um, it, it's uh, wrestling fans are absolutely amazing uh, people. They're probably the most passionate fans of any. I would say so. Uh, sport or entertainment or however you want to classify it, um, but yeah, it's. I would say this. This is what I would say to 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 end that subject is wrestling fans, get yourself some first form and get yourself and get to the gym. Get some and, weights. Uh, grab some weights. Grab some weights, eat you some beef, and um take you a supplement and uh let's pick up some weights and just <clears throat> Wow. Yeah, get in a fight maybe. 
Um, I'm a huge believe. I'm a huge believer in that. Oh, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah, I believe that you should. You got to get punched in the face every now well, yeah, and then. Yeah, you need to get punched. In the face yeah. Once. yeah, yeah. No, it's him, it's good. You for know, you. I used to. I've I've asked actually asked talent before. Have you ever have been you punched? ever been in a fight before? And I'm shocked to find out the amount of people that had never been in a fight. I can't believe they were truthful by saying that they hadn't. Well, been yeah, into a fight. Yeah, I, I exactly. Because no, I would lie. I'd lie in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, man, I used to fight all the time. Yeah. I, 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 I was in a fight on my way here. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had to fight. Yeah. No, there were, there were guys that, yeah, I've never, no, never really been in a fight. Really? Or what, what do you call it? What it classifies a fight? Like having to hit somebody or getting hit? Well, I mean, first of all, there's oh, somebody's got to get hit. Somebody's got to get hit to be in a yeah. fight. Yeah. Or at least there's got to be an attempt of a hit. Yeah. You know, a swing, a swing of some sort. Did you slip it? Did you? Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I have zero desire to get into another fight. No, been had plenty. Yeah. And I don't want to be in another fight. Um, but, uh, I think it's good to at least have the confidence to know that if that situation presented itself, I'm no Muhammad Ali by any means, but I've been punched, and I know how hard it is actually yeah. to get knocked out and to knock someone out. It's yeah. it's not an easy thing. So, like, uh, no, to all the wrestling fans out there, you know, just you uh, just riff, man. You go on, go on with it. Just, just, just go pick up some weights, get in a, get in a fight, and uh, and man, we need to maybe uh, get back to that attitude era on the ladies. <laughs> oh, the ladies. <laughs> we need the ladies to come. Yeah, I mean, what what did WCW have? What was the the dancers? The, the, Nitro, Nitro, girls. the Nitro girls. Yeah. yeah, that was always a highlight. Yeah, those. That yeah, was, that added a little. Uh, well, when your main demographic <clears throat> goes, you know, from from what eight to twelve year olds to eighteen to thirty six overnight, it seemed like. Yeah, yeah. You, you, some Nitro girls were they fit right in with that. I watched uh, uh, Jerry the King Lawler's uh, sit down with uh, Stone Cold on his podcast that you've done oh, yeah. twice now. Broken Skulls, yeah. And I don't know if you've seen it or not, no, but I uh, you know Lawler's just a different character. Oh, he's a riot, man. <laughs> yeah, he is, I love it to death. He's funny. And you know it, a lot of the stuff that you just think that you forgot about that this was him, but I mean it was. Mm -hmm. you know, the, Lawler was just wild during the oh <laughs> the, atti puppies. the attitude era. Oh, and he was so funny. Can you imagine if you go back and watch some of that stuff? There was a, I, I bet there's three quarters of it you couldn't play it today. Ninety nine percent of it you can't play. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you guys did back then that I'm like, holy crap, that doesn't age well. That would not you well that, that, that doesn't age well. No. <laughs> yeah, it does not age well. Um, but then I'm watching this about Lawler and I'm, and, uh, just real quick. So we can end this episode or we're just going to ramble on about stuff. Him being an announcer and how great he was and how funny he was and how just over the top he was and everything else and how WWE's always had that guy. And now on the side, Pat McAfee has come back yeah. to, you know, brings a lot, a lot of energy. Yeah, to the show. and I'm really excited about that. Um, I think that uh, a lot of the fans were like, "Hey, he needs to get caught up with the product. He needs to maybe watch it a little bit more, or something like this." What some of the comments that I've heard? Oh, just saw. just from him coming back the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, shit, he just came right out of he's also football and super busy. And he but, does a what well, he does his live show every day. Yeah, he's, he's got the biggest show on ESPN, and he's been there for like six months. Yeah. So, you know, cut the cut the dude some slack. Man. Yeah, he, he'll be fine. He'll yeah. catch up. He's a, 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 but what he can bring to the table is that Lawler, Bobby Heenan esque. Mm -hmm. That you know, for a guy that's not a wrestler, I mean, he's not a guy from yeah. the industry. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, I think it's really. Really neat to see what he can potentially do here with yeah. being in that position because when he came out for the Rumble and he goes and climbs in the ring, <laughs> doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. And when you get a pop like he gets yeah. for not yeah. doing anything in the ring, yeah, 
You're doing something. Yeah, you got something. You got it. Yeah. You got that it factor. Yeah. I, I just like the energy. He, you, he comes off to me as just like a, a, like a genuine super fan yeah. that's been given a microphone, and then his energy is really contagious. And When ESPN says it's completely okay to cuss, you just do you. Yeah. ESPN. <laughs> That's, uh, you got a little juice whenever you're essentially there to say, hey, man, we're, we're cool with you. Uh, we're owned by Disney. Yeah. And right. we're completely okay with you just <laughs> saying whatever. We're going to go, oh, we're going to go with this for as long as. Yeah. Because okay. you're, uh, you're bringing in some cheese, apparently. Well, that cheese talks, man. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, Mark, um, you know, I don't know what we accomplished on this episode. But hey man, we had a nice chat. We had a nice chat. Uh, you didn't kill a kid in, uh, in Lubbock. In Lubbock. And he's not a kid. He's a grown man, but you didn't kill a girl. I still man. didn't kill him. You still didn't kill him. That was just a good thing. That we appreciate that. Um, Talked about Australia. Australia. I'm looking Cor- forward to that, man. The down under. and down, uh, The one dead man down under, man. It's, yeah. it, it's going to be a good time. I'm going to have lots of stories. I can, I can promise you. I will have lots of stories when I come back from Australia. That's uh, that I'm looking forward to, and um, and then we've realized that uh, your retirement and the Rock's retirement looks completely different. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he he needs to pick it up a little bit <laughs> and uh, quit taking off so much time to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. Stop stop the fishing, Dwayne, and focus a little bit more on business. One and more maybe, business. One more business. Yeah. And uh, potentially try to do a movie that's good. I don't know. Wow. wow. <laughs> He's Brother, a- hey, it's my boss, man. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get fired. Okay, right. well, hey, this was the One Dead Man Show with Mark Calloway and Matt Lida. And uh, if we're not here next week, you'll know that. Uh, well, no, no, we're six feet under. The One Dead Man Show, may, you may get fired from that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The six, feet, six feet under. Feet. You know, yeah, they, it's hard. Yeah, they, He can't fire you from this. No, they can't fire me, right? Yeah. Screw I don't know. Rock, man. Yeah. Uh, hell with the rock. <laughs> uh, uh, no, we love the rock. Um, well, Mark, it was great. Let's do it again. All right. How about next week? We'll try it. All right.